A lot of times as Ravens fans, we can have these dream scenarios, things that we envision the team doing, whether realistic or even sometimes unrealistic. Sometimes it can be uh, we dream of the Baltimore Ravens signing this specific player or we envision them trading for this superstar, even if they ain't got no money, even if we know how the Ravens normally operate when it comes to their draft picks. But then again, there can be the realistic scenarios too. Like, oh, well, we drafted this guy. We expect him to contribute this way. Okay. We signed this guy. We expect him to contribute like that. But in this case, the dream was with Brandon Stevens. And I don't think it was such a far-fetched dream, but John Harbaugh, he shut it down regardless of what it was. Uh, And we're going to get into that shortly. Before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn the notifications on and please leave a like on the video. My goodness, yesterday, I don't know what got into (laughs) y'all. I sucked I don't know what got into y'all, man, but I appreciate you. I I love each and every one of y'all that watch these videos. I appreciate y'all. I thank you for just giving us your time every single day because it does mean everything. I I love y'all. Now, um, something that John Harbaugh doesn't love uh, is an idea that a lot of Ravens fans have been talking about recently when it comes to Brandon Stevens. We know Brandon Stevens, his career started off, has been very shaky um, to for probably the best example that I could use because it's been a lot of back and forth because first, you know, in college, he used to be a running back, then he used to be a safety, then he came into the NFL, uh, then he was a safety, and then they switched him to corner, then they switched him to safety again, but then they switched him to corner, so now he's been a corner. Um, last year, he was amazing. Brandon Stevens was killing it at corner. He was the best Ravens cornerback last year on the team. He was amazing. So I'm like, oh, my goodness. If if he continues this, ooh, Ravens going to have some decisions to make uh, after this season, after 2024, because he'll be a free agent then. But this season hasn't been the best for Brandon Stevens. Um, it's been pretty rough for him. Um, and we hope that he definitely gets it turned around really, really soon. Uh, but it, there's been a lot of struggles with Brandon Stevens this year. So I remember the first place that I heard it was on here from actually a question from one of y'all where somebody suggested, why don't the Baltimore Ravens put him at safety? And I was thinking, oh, my goodness, that would, in my opinion, that would be such a good move because Brandon Stevens, in my opinion, I'm no film guy, but in my opinion, he uh, and I said this plenty of times before. He reminds me of Anthony Averett because Anthony Averett was somebody as a cornerback who was always around the ball. I mean, excuse me, always around the 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 the, the wide receiver. Um, but he just struggled a bit to make a play on the ball. That was his only issue because he would never get burned. Well, occasionally, I mean, every corner get, gets burned here and there, but. Most times, nine times out of ten, he wouldn't be getting burned, wouldn't be getting beat like that, like that. But um, he would just he would be right there with the receiver. Sticky coverage all over him, but he would just struggle a bit to make a play on the ball. And I feel like that's Brandon Stevens' issue as well. But if they moved him back to safety, then it's like, okay, he ain't got to worry about getting his head turned around because he's already looking that way. He had, he got everything in front of him. And then on top of that, Brandon Stevens, one attribute about him that's so good, he is not afraid of anything, anybody. He ain't afraid to get physical. He ain't afraid to come up and make a tackle. And that's something that the Baltimore Ravens really value in their cornerbacks because Marlon Humphrey is the same way. And Nate Wiggins, hey, <laughs> that's what Nate Wiggins said. Don't let this frame fool you. I ain't afraid to come up and make a hit because we done seen it. But um, with Brandon Stevens, I just felt like a, a move for him at safety, it would just make so much sense. But John Harbaugh, he uh, didn't feel that way because he was asked about it in yesterday's press. <laughs> and he said uh, moving Brandon Stevens to a deep safety role is not on the table. He's focused on playing cornerback. So a lot of times with John Harbaugh, like he will, if a question like that gets asked, He'll be like, oh, well, we'll think about it. Oh, well, yeah, we're looking at all different possible situations. We'll analyze it. We'll look at the film. He usually says something like that. But for this, John Harbaugh, he shut it down. He said, no, ain't happening. Nope. Brandon Stevens is a corner. He is not a safety. So that's Harbaugh letting us know, like, all right, Ray, kill that dream immediately because it ain't going down. And, I mean, it, it is what it is. We obviously hope the best for this Baltimore Ravens team. We hope the best for Brandon Stevens. But I, I just felt like that was actually a, a sort of realistic scenario. Not Because it, it's not far-fetched. It kind of is, but at the same time, it isn't because he's played safety before. And I, I feel like it would just be such a smooth transition. It would be good for the football team. But then it's like, okay, well, what do you do at that other outside corner? 
Well, hey, Nate Wiggins. Nate Wiggins. You got Nate Wiggins. Uh, you still got Marlon Humphrey, even though they, they really, I mean, they love Marlon Humphrey everywhere, but it, they really love him. When there's three corners on the field, they love him in the slot. He is the slot guy. Um, but Arthur Millette, he's also a slot guy. Darius Washington, he's also a slot guy. So who would be that other outside corner? Well, I think in that case, you would have to kick Marlon out. And obviously, Nate Wiggins out. But then there could be times where Brandon Stevens could play the slot. There could be times where Kyle Hamilton obviously does too. But Darius Washington, in my opinion, I think he would be that guy. Darius Washington, Arthur Millette, like we mentioned earlier. So you, you have options. And I, I feel like... At this point of the season with the pass defense, even if it didn't work, you could try it because obviously the pass defense is, I believe they're the worst in the league, right? They're definitely the worst Ravens pass defense ever, but it's like, I feel like it wouldn't, it wouldn't have hurt to try because it's like, well, what's the worst that could happen? It can't get no worse than it already is. Only place to go from here is up. Like literally, the only place to go with the pass defense. The only place to go with the pass defense is up. That's it. But John Harbaugh said, nope, it ain't going down. Now we've reached my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your questions. And if you'd like to be part of it, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com uh, or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you'd like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. Um, now, um, before we get into it, there was a comment in yesterday's video that really stuck out to me when I was going through the comment section. And it came from my guy Outlaw in Texas. And shout out to you, man. Um, but he said something, that, and I've seen this being said before, um, a little different ways here and there, but l let's read his comment. He said, one thing I will say, uh, there have been a lot of complaining going on ever since Lamar Jackson came to town. Uh, a lot of new Ravens fans, a lot of new Madden GMs, a lot of new cut this guy, trade this guy fans. I've been following this team since Ted Marchabrota was the coach. Definitely a new wave of fans now that seem to not understand how hard it is to win in the NFL. Spoiled, I say. So um, that has been a big conversation, Re not even just recently, but yeah, a lot of since Lamar Jackson's come into town and just he's brought a lot of new Ravens fans um, as Ravens fans. But that's not a problem. You want your team to grow. You want your team to be even more popular. You want your team to get the prime time games. You want them to get the attention and all that. But let, let me break this down piece by piece. So, so there have been a lot of complaining going on ever since Lamar came into town. A lot of new Ravens fans. So we talked about the new Ravens fans part, but the complainer. And then he talked about um, a lot of new Madden GMs, cut this guy, trade this guy fans. So with that part, yes, that is true. But I'm going to tell you why. It's because so many of us Ravens fans have seen the potential in Lamar Jackson from long before this year, long before even last year. And we've just been wanting the Baltimore Ravens to capitalize on that potential much more than they have. That, and, and that's what it's about. Ravens fans, they, they don't want to settle. They want to win. And we want to win it all. We want to win it all every single year. We want this team to really achieve greatness because they, see, they, they saw the potential in Lamar from so long ago. But the Ravens didn't capitalize on it like they should have. That's why so many fans will complain and be like, all right, we should trade for this. Guy. Because they just they want the best for the team. That's it. Ravens fans want the best for the team. It's like we all got our different views and viewpoints on what the Baltimore Ravens should or should not do. And a lot of times we, we disagree with each other on how Ravens should go about this, how they should go about that. And that's fine. Again, like I always say, as long as it's done with respect and love, cool. We, 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 could, we could disagree. That's cool. But um, in my opinion, I think that's what it is. Ravens fans just like, hey, Lamar, he is that guy. And they saw it from a long time ago. Like, oh man, Ravens got that guy. Oh yeah, we need to take advantage of it for sure. Uh, he also said he'd been following the team since Ted Marchabrota was a coach. Definitely a new wave of fans now that seem to not understand how hard it is to win in the NFL. Spoiled, I say. Spoiled, yes. Ravens have an amazing organization. I was just looking at um, even the, the the introduction videos, not even just from the night game, even from the uh, the game the other day against the Broncos, um, and I'm like, man, I, I I do miss going to the games. Um, it's it's just it's a it's a completely different atmosphere. It's amazing there. Then I was watching the intros from the Bills game, then the intros from um, the other night when they played the uh, the Bengals. It's just like, man, they, they they put on such a great show even before the game even starts, man. So we 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 got it good. Now I don't know how a lot of other teams do it around the league, but. 
we as Ravens fans got it good. But then when you see the product on the field, um, this team, like, fans just want to win, man. They just want to win, and, and they, they see so much potential for this team, and they just don't want the potential to go to waste. That's all it is, in my opinion. But, yeah, man, I, I appreciate you, uh, Outlaw. That, that that comment just it, it stuck out to me. And, again, you, you've been rocking with the team since he said, Ted March, bro, that's a, that's a long time, my friend. And we all respect it. Um, fans that been a, a fan of the Ravens since they were first introduced, fans that was a fan of the Colts, um, fans that have been around for a long time, much respect. Fans that have been around for a short time, much respect. But the bottom line at the, both the beginning and the end of the day is that we all just want to win. We all just want the team to win. We w I don't think it's anything wrong with wanting the Ravens to win every single Super Bowl. Yeah, it is hard. But, I mean, look at the Kansas City Chiefs. They keep winning every single Super Bowl. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> We just feel like, hey, that should be us too. We we want to get the the multiple ring, and obviously the Ravens got two already. But in this era, the Lamar era, it's like hey, we we got the quarterback for it. We 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 got we we done had some teams for it too. We just we gotta get there. So. Might as well make it happen this year, right, Ravens? All right, first question came from my guy, Devon. He said, I'm a long-time fan and subscriber. Uh, thank you, your wife and your family, for the exclusive professional content that they allow you to de deliver to us, avid Ravens fans. Uh, boy, oh boy, where do I even start? Well, first off, I think you'll probably remember me, with well, the name at least. Not a patron, but uh, watching every single day. He said, okay, that was a long intro, so bear with me. I appreciate that a lot, man. I really do. I, I, I really do. Um, and yeah, they... Uh, the fam family is a big part of it because if, if they didn't support what we did, then <laughs> we wouldn't be able to do it. Um, y'all are family. If y'all didn't support what we did, we wouldn't be able to do it. A lot of times, like it happened to me yesterday um, where I just sometimes sometimes it just hit me like randomly um, from looking through the comments and stuff and just seeing the outpour, just uh, just love um, and just positivity and just support, man. Um, I just I, I think about it a lot. Because it's like, man, I don't, I don't deserve to be able to do this as a job. It, it's not a right or anything like that. Like, oh man, yeah, I, no. Um, it's a privilege, man. It's a privilege, and um, it's a privilege that I, I'm very, very appreciative of. That I, I really like, really, really love to be able to do this. Um, it's it's fun. It, it is a lot of work. <laughs> it's a whole lot of work. Um, but it's fun work, and and I, I just, I, I love it so much, man. I, I really do And that's why I always tell y'all That I appreciate y'all man Because without y'all it, it wouldn't happen It, it really wouldn't um, Y'all do so much More than you realize And I appreciate y'all so, so thank you for that He said so I'm gonna get straight to it uh, I've been Ravens fans Before they were actually Even called the Ravens Hey, look at, hey good timing Good good timing With, with the previous uh, comment From the last video But anyway uh, He said I was a voter Back in 95 When the Ravens Was one of the options For the future name Of the new all black Colored expansion team That was called the Baltimore uh, Yeah I'm that years old Shh. <laughs> He said I was a previous Childhood Dallas fan From about 88 to 95 But yeah I kind of started To fall back When the team broke up But when Jerry Jones Let Jimmy Johnson go That was it for me Excuse me for not Being uh, one to stay in a relationship Past the expiration date <laughs> This guy Oh, uh, now nah, I lost where he was at. Oh, there it goes. He said, "Now that I look back at it, I've been like this since childhood." And he said, "Hello, that's another story." Anyways, I, dig I digress. Uh, I said that to get to this. I saw that collapse, and this one is looking similar, but for opposite reasons. Jimmy Johnson was the reason for the dynasty, and they got rid of him. In my opinion, John Harbaugh is the reason. Will always just be short of one. That's interesting, and that is a um, that's a very interesting point of view, especially from a longtime fan. Um, and again, it, it, it just reminds me of the comment we were just talking about previously. Um, we talked about cut this guy, trade that guy. And not, no, 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 that was talking about players, but that can also talk about coaches, too, because a lot of Ravens fans will do that same thing. But this is interesting. He said he's a great leader of men, but not a great football mind. Kind of equivalent to Joel Osteen being a good motivational speaker, but he ain't really ain't no pastor or therapist. So that deeper spirit problem is never really addressed. John Harbaugh is kind of like uh, mom's love and emotion uh, when what the Ravens really need is dad's discipline and logic. Oof. I heard a fan ask on Bobby Baltimore and Sarah's DeVault, is the Ravens defense better than the Steelers offense? In my opinion, the Ravens defense is worse. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. Um, he said, in the defense paired with John Harbaugh's inability to adapt and pass coverages uh, and make personnel changes is, is what holds Lamar and the Ravens back. That's interesting. See, man, 
Y'all, like, so much stuff can just tie in. We were just talking about the personnel changes, the possibilities with the Brandon Stevens. We know it ain't going to happen. But we were just talking about that. And boom, he talked about personnel change. Anyway, uh, he said, also another fan said, if Lamar were to have Mike Tomlin as a coach, he'd have two to three Super Bowls by now. And I agree. Uh, the entire Ravens culture, fan base, and franchise is that of defense. So we don't actually need a strictly defensive-minded coach. We need more of an on-field leaders like we had in 2052, 55, Yonder, and J.O. Nor do we need a special teams guru whose team is also bad at special teams. Just putting that out there. Too. We need a well-rounded, uh, predominantly offensive-minded coach. He specializes in special teams, and we're near last in the league at that. Uh, he's probably the least effective coach in the NFL at adapting to a team's defense or offensive in-game strategies. He can't adapt in-game or mid-season. X and O's just ain't his thing. As much as I and we love the dude as a person, human being, and a coach for all he has done and been for us, but it's time to make that change. It's business. Uh, what's love? got to do with it okay that boy brought out the tina turner okay anyway he said we need to make a change at kicker safety and head coach uh because he won't he's holding us back and he's not a person to step down now the video yesterday where we talked about the whole kicker thing uh if those things are accurate with what um isaac punts was saying then they would have to figure that out um because that's that's essential uh and it hasn't been the work but it it has been a big decline in the special teams in the kicking game in the field goal game and they they can't afford to have that continue anyway um he said uh, i think he's the problem uh we've shuffled uh, we've shuffled through every other possible problem that the organization has had since the last super bowl and fixed almost every problem but the head coach we've had different gms technically yeah just two but um he said multiple offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators well yeah now that's tricky too because you can't keep Everybody, you ain't gonna be able to keep off. Hey, ain't no offense coordinator staying for like no five, ten years. Uh, but anyway, same with defense coordinator. He said, in the entire player personnel side from Justin Tucker, and now he and John Harbaugh are in the way. I love them and will forever love them both, but they need to be replaced in order for the 2024 and beyond Ravens team to be legit challengers. <sighs> See, this is um, he, he's not done yet, but I gotta just step in real quick. I think the Ravens are legit challengers right now. They just got to get out of their own way in the biggest moments. Um, yeah, John Harbaugh certainly, he got his struggles. He definitely does. But like I always say with John Harbaugh, um, when, if he has a blunder, call him out on it. No problem. If he gets it right, give him the praise for it. No problem. Uh, I feel like it's important to, to be balanced with both. Um, obviously, there are a lot less blunders than... Um, than praise because they're seven and three now i think it's also important that even if you're winning even if you have a great record which the ravens do they got a really good record um that you fix the issues because if those issues are still issues i mean you're winning this in spite of them like the defense um but you want to address those issues best can that's why hey the beginning of this video we talked about the whole brandon stevens thing it's like what was the worst that could happen if they moved them to safety so but anyway he said when your divisional rivals Tomlin and more opposing defenses know your play call snap counts and can openly call out your in-game weaknesses and you still can't adapt to them that's a major problem for you as a head coach not to address or have a defense for now that's something too um Mike Tomlin obviously John Harbaugh has had his struggles with Mike Tomlin but you got to think about this context is important because we're talking about because Mike Tomlin be like oh Harbaugh he, he don't play a full four quarters um they're gonna send a house you know whenever when everything's on the line they're gonna send a house call them predictable all that stuff but it's like you think about how many times he's went against Mike Tomlin think about it. he's literally been going against Mike Tomlin since 2008 2008 He's been going against Mike Tomlin since 2000. It's 2024. Getting ready to be 2025. He's been going against Mike Tomlin for 16 years. If you've been going against somebody for 16 years, they're going to know you. They're going to know you. Then think about this, too. Um, obviously, he struggles with Andy Reid as well. Chiefs crazy we just started talking about the Chiefs and my camera ended up overheating on me so it couldn't take the pressure like the Ravens haven't been able to for the longest either but this year we writing them wrongs Chiefs Ooh. <laughs> but anyway like we were saying um because we back now this is like 20 minutes from that last clip but anyway um John Harbaugh like he came from un under Andy Reid so Andy Reid he, he got that on him Mike Tomlin he knows him not that it's an excuse but you got to understand why in my opinion um so harbaugh has a big opportunity just th this week even this week 
to start righting a lot of them wrongs. Harbaugh has beat Tomlin plenty of times. Tomlin has beat Harbaugh plenty of times. But these Baltimore Ravens, like we saw them last year. Like last year was like, really, man? Lamar had a perfect game, man, against them Steelers. And then drop, and drop, and drop, and drop, and drop, and drop, and drop. Then he threw that pick in the end zone on that fade route uh, to Odell Beckham Jr. It's like, man, like, it, it, it's like it's always something with the Steelers, man. It's always and it's always something new. So hopefully, what will be new this week will just be straight up beating them. That's it. That's all you got to do. Anyway, continuing with his question, uh, he also said. Lamar has grown every single year without fail, but now I think he's beyond Hobbs' tut- tutelage. Uh, he switched up his cadence, changed his throwing motion, got better at ball placement, throwing stands, touch passes, and put it more of an arc on the ball. Uh, always looking downfield, thinking throw first. I feel like he's always done that, though. Maybe not his rookie year, but after he's done that a lot. Like a whole lot. He's, he's been doing it. But anyway, continue. He said, uh, at reading defenses, too many drills, and everything else in between, honestly. Now, think about that, though. Think about what you just said. You said that um, you feel like Lamar has grown every single year with that fail, but be, he's beyond Harbaugh's tutelage. Who, I, look, I ain't no big Harbaugh defender or anything like that, but who's the head coach right now? And is Lamar not playing his best football ever right now? Harbaugh's still there. He's still there. Like, I, if I, I now nah, I did say I said the same thing that I just feel like Lamar had reached his peak under Giro years ago, and that they needed to move on from him a long time ago. Then they kept him, then they kept him again, then they finally moved. I was like, oh, okay, finally. But um, Harbaugh's a head coach, and Lamar play be the best in the world right now. So. Ah, anyway, continue. He said, honestly, the team philosophy needs to be tweaked by an aggressive minded coach, and we need to. <laughs> I'll put that be aggressive. <laughs> Sometimes we be like, why are you going for it on that fourth down? Take the points and this and that. I was aggressive. He is definitely aggressive. <laughs> anyway, he said, and we need to do it quick if we call ourselves in win now mode. That wouldn't be win now mode if they got rid of Harbaugh right now. Now, I don't know if you're talking about right now, right now, but if they got rid of Harbaugh right now, that wouldn't be win now mode, especially if they're 7-3 and three right now. And they, they got, oh, you know what? Get rid of Harbaugh. Now, if you're talking after the season, if the Ravens fell short, especially depending on how they fall short, okay, I can see that. But right now, not, not right now. But anyway, he said, we got to stop acting like controlling the clock is enough, especially when as soon as we score, they just score right back and make a week-to-week uh, and in-game adaptability priority because it's costed us too many leads, games, and ultimately seasons. Zach Orr is doing his thing. A few mishaps here, but he's a rookie too, although he's performing like a rookie of the year, D.C., if you ask me. Defensive player of the year, what? I know I might sound crazy, but hit me out. With all the decisions that he's made and calls he's put out on the field, let's be real. If the players that were in the right spots had made the plays that he's put them in position to, they'd be undefeated right now. And he would be and he would be considering him a great young defensive mind. And then we wouldn't be talking about Zach. It's not him. Uh, if they were in position to make the plays and they just didn't make them, that's not bad coaching. That's bad player execution. It's the personnel. OK, well, that's 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 a good point, because there have been times when it's been on the players. There have been times when it's been on the coach. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely been a good share of both, uh, in my opinion. But anyway, continuing, he said, and that, my friend, is John Harbaugh's call. Harbaugh likes to make people fit his scheme instead of making a scheme for his player skill sets. Hence, Brandon Stevens at cornerback. He's clearly a safety shaking my head. Dude has got to be probably the worst cornerback ever for any team. I don't know about all that part. I, I disagree with that part, but he said he's flat out horrible and Marcus Williams is washed. Uh, the Ravens have hurt so many people's careers trying to make squares fit into circles and vice versa, man. Bo Braid is better than as far as Roquan. Well, first, before we talk about them, um, yeah, I definitely want to say more, Brandon Stevens is the worst cornerback. Yeah, I know that, that was, you're speaking out of frustration and whatnot, but um, uh, Marcus Williams, it, 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 we were talking about earlier in this video. How Brandon Stevens last year, amazing, amazing cornerback, amazing. She was great. Marcus Williams, when he's, for the majority, when he's been with the Ravens, minus this year, he's been pretty good. He's been pretty good. Um, but he just, he will keep getting hurt. But um, he's been pretty good overall. So um, from last year to this year, did they just forget how to play football? What happened? Why has there been this tremendous drop off from last year to this year, specifically on that side too? Marcus Williams. Brandon Stevens, even Roquan Smith too. I don't know. I think you're about to talk about him in a little bit, but what changed? What changed from last year to this year? Mm, anyway, he said. And as far as Roquan, I saw how fat he was in training camp. He looked like all those trips. He looked like all those trips in restaurants around the world this offseason took his toll. Oh my goodness. So what are you gonna say about me? Anyway, uh, he said. Um, 
he got that max contract and took the summer off like he retired or something. He got to step it back up. No, he got the contract like not last year, but the year before last. And he did his thing last year. So, Roquan, he did his thing last year. Now, he did have Patrick Wayne next to him, too. But, hey, anyway, he said because his play on the field is giving off just middle of the pack right now. Yeah, Roquan ain't really been too good this year, in my opinion. And a lot of us have noticed it from jump um, week after week. Uh, and I know a lot of Ravens fans, their defense will be like, oh, well, he's leading the league in tackles. That don't really tell the whole story. Uh, anyway, he said, I'm confident in him, but Marcus, Tuck, and Hobbs, not so much. And Brandon Stevens needs to be moved because he can't get in the way of the ball to save his life. Uh, dude needs to always be facing the QB at all times. Tuck ain't, oh, so that means you want him that safety. Oh, you're going to love the beginning of this video then. Uh, he said, Tuck ain't been automatic in like three years. I think it's time. We get, hey, watch the video from yesterday. Uh, it's, hey, we woo, yeah. Anyway, he said, I, th I think it's time. It's declined to extra points now. Sorry, but I lived through Stover's last years, and I was also unfortunate enough to have been a fan through Joe Flacco and Billick's last few years as well. Uh, well, I know that was long, but it's been a while. These are just all issues I have with our covered and then beloved 2024 Baltimore Ravens that have been festering. Anyways, I keep in touch and keep delivering that fire content and think keep it clean like only you do. <laughs> Hashtags and prayers. I hey, appreciate you, Devon. Thank you, man. Next question came from my guy, God King Jafira. He said, uh, you can find me in the comment section of most of your videos. Hey, I, I appreciate that, my friend. He said, I think the Baltimore Ravens are going to try as hard as they can to stick with Zach or, or the reason is because they need someone loyal to Baltimore. There's no way that the Baltimore Ravens are going to be a continual powerhouse losing coaches every time we have a great season. I think they think the exact or will be a, or that he'll be a Baltimore Raven for a long time. And when other teams come calling, He'll stay put. Uh, in the last three seasons, how many coaches have left Kansas City? I don't know. That's something they just talked about. Like, the coaches don't be leaving Kansas City. Like, they be keeping everybody. They just keep winning, 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 winning. But was that oil? I don't think after this year. <laughs> I don't think nobody coming calling for him right now, man. I, I I really don't. So I don't even think Ravens even got to worry about that. Next question came from my guy Matt. He said, "Hey there, I only became a football fan and a Ravens fan since last year. Hey, welcome aboard, Matt." He said, "Now Ravens don't have a good track record against the Steelers over the past few years." Oh, that, my, my boy been doing his research. Okay, all right. He said, "It seems like even when the Steelers have a bad team, they become Superman when they go against us. They make it their life mission to beat us." Last year, I saw that pump block safety in that one game. Saw nothing like that before. Are you worried about the next game with the Steelers? Yeah. Yes, yes, it's Steelers, it's division football You gotta be worried about every division game You look at the, the two Bengals games That the Ravens done had this year It's like, oh my goodness, can a game get any more stressful Than those? Not really Then look at the Browns game, we this powerhouse team Oh, we don't want five in a row, let's go we, Browns, they were one and six At the time And they beat us, they beat us so, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, they are a good team. They are a winning team. And we know Ravens like to rise to the occasion when it comes to better teams. But still, it's, it's a game that I'm definitely going to be stressed for. And I'm sure a lot of us are. But Ravens, if you want to ease our stress and blow the Steelers out, be our guest. My imagination is running. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, Team Keep It Clean. Salute to you all. Hope all is well with everyone. So, we are all pretty much disappointed and worried about our pass rush at this point in the season. We all understand that most of these Q QBs have more time in the pocket than, than Diddy has in prison. All right. Here we go. But, um... The pass rush, actually, it was better against the Bengals. wasn't the best in the world, but it was a lot better than we have seen recently. Uh, so that helps, obviously. He said, anyway, with the lack of EDC getting us any true help, and I was just imagining a scenario that is unrealistic, but who knows anything is possible. Nomadee is pretty much doubled all the time. Uh, Pierce is out for a while. Why not get two players to help? Okay, okay. So he actually sent this on November 6th. So he sent this, and you see how backed up I am. Uh, he sent this before the game on Thursday. So I think John might have changed his tune a little bit now since Travis Jones came back and we saw the real Namdi Matabika. Anyway, he said, uh, first, why not consider a one-time Raven who has hands? I don't see how asking Marcus Peters to come back and play safety is any worse than what we have with Eddie. No, I, mm, yes, he would be a great ball hawk at safety. But where my biggest fear, and I think a lot of people's biggest fear for Marcus Peters would be if he played safety, would be tackling. And he is not a, a tackler. So if a running back, wide receiver, tight end, they get to that third level of the defense, pass the defensive line, pass the linebackers to the, in the secondary, that would be scary. He is not a tackler at all. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but I mean not. But yeah They ain't gonna do that Anyway He said I mean at least uh, With him uh, He can catch the gimme balls That QBs throw his way And the second person Though And this is just dreaming But Aaron Donald Is home retired <laughs> 
He tried to get that man out of retirement. He said, I mean, he's a true Ram, and they gave him everything he had, but they weren't winning, so I think he retired early. But imagine if we could talk him into asking the Rams to release him so he can come and have the opportunity to chase that ring as a Raven. Well, you already got it as a Ram, but... um. I'm sure he could probably still play too. But I wonder I wonder if he's doing what a lot of them defensive and offensive linemen do when they stop playing and just shedding all that weight, just losing it all. I, I don't know. I haven't seen him. He said, I know it's a dream, but imagine how uh, much press the two of them could garner. <laughs> Again, I know it's a dream probably for both of them, but hey, sometimes dreams do come true. Anyway, team, keep it clean. Keep it tight. Or the diddler might try to come get you at night. I'm out. Peace. Oh, my goodness. We, we started this video talking about dreams, and we ended it talking about dreams, too. Next question came from my guy, Zager. He said, am I the only one who thinks the rough in the passer call is stupid? If a 300-pound grown man throws all his way to the QB and he decides to throw the ball, how do they expect for him to stop all his momentum? Yeah, they, they, it's very ticky-tacky, man. They, um... It, it can be very frustrating. And, and, yeah, 300 pounds running full speed. You can't just pull up. You can't just stop. And if you second guess, you can get your, yourself hurt even more than the quarterbacks. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's really annoying, man. He said, uh, please help me understand unless there's something about the call that I don't know. I was telling my wife last night that it is the stupidest call in the game. It's like if, if you're going to – roughing the passer should be if you hit the QB like extra late and it's, it's, it's obviously late and it was something that was completely unnecessary. That I get that, but it's, so, some of these calls be like, really, man? Come on now. And I think some of them called it like scare tactics to to try to keep the defensive linemen uh, from really hitting the quarterback. But it's it's a QB league. They trying to protect these quarterbacks. At, well, some of them, not all of them. But anyway, he also said I don't like how they making a big deal about the face mask call because they don't ever do it when the Chiefs are holding. They hold almost sixty percent of the time. Probably more. Uh, don't get me wrong. Yes, it was a face mask. But if you're going to say something about penalty, do it for the Chiefs too. How do you feel about that? Now with the face mask, he's talking about the, he's talking about the face mask at the end of the game on Burrow. Uh, they could have called that. They could also called multiple holding calls on that same exact play, uh, that two point conversion. But yeah, uh, that against the Bengals, the Bengals in that game, yeah, th that was definitely a missed call. It, it was a missed call. They also missed a, rough, missed a real rough in the pass on so Marlon Humphrey hitting hitting Joe Burrow. But um, there was a lot of that. It was, it was heavily in favor of the Bengals that game. Heavily in favor of the Bengals that game. And it was surprising as a Ravens fan to actually um, to actually have a call that actually went all the way. It, and that's weird because that just doesn't happen. Uh, he also said, I know this Ravens channel, but come on now. I know you've seen that garbage with Patrick Mahomes. He needs to be fine. I honestly feel like the league is rigged for him to win. It will be a lot of little funny business in there with Mahomes. But um, I uh, he's talking about this clip where Mahomes was telling somebody to, oh, can you tell him when he's close to me? I did see some people saying he was talking to the refs, asking when the defender's close to him. But uh, I think it was really him talking to the officials uh, about his offensive lineman. I forget exactly what it was. But, hey, you never know, baby. Next question came from my guy Jay. He said, first off, I do got to say thank you very much for doing everything that you do for us. You sincerely have no idea how much it helps most of us get through our hardships, troubles, our worst days to just make us feel human once again. I also want to say congratulations with the new edition uh, with Little Lady and hope everything with you and your family is fine and well. I appreciate that, Jay. Appreciate that, Jay. And, and, and you know, I, you already know I appreciate you. We done talked offline uh, a couple of times, so I, I appreciate you, man, a lot, man. So thank you, man. Uh, he said, simple question. When do you think enough will be enough for Zach Orr? We are wasting Lamar's youth, and it's killing me. Y'all know it, too. I know they're not going to get rid of Orr, but what's going to give? Let's go, team. Keep it clean. And thank you for all for making me feel like this is a family. Oh, it is for sure, man. Um, but when is enough enough? Uh, yeah, they, they're not getting rid of Zach Orr. So... Nothing this year is going to happen with Zach Orr. No changes, anything like that. They brought in Dean Pease. And again, they said it was Zach Orr bringing him in. I really think that was a, a move from upstairs. Whether it was Harbaugh, whether it was EDC, whether it was Bishotti, I think they were just like, hey, this, this needs to get right. And it hasn't gotten right yet. And again, like you mentioned earlier, it's been on both on the players and Zach Orr. Um, so they for that, they really can't do anything to the – well, they really won't do anything until the offseason. Um, I can see them keeping him, though. I can see them keeping him around and um, being like, oh, we'll give you another shot. Uh, again, because of the loyalty. Because of the loyalty that Baltimore Ravens have to certain people, especially with him. He literally, from 99% start to finish, I mean, I know he was with the Jaguars for a year as a, I think, a linebacker coach. But majority, he's been with the Ravens. Started his football career with the Ravens. Ended it with the Ravens. Then coached with the Ravens and stuff. Had the little stint in Jacksonville. But he's been with the Ravens majority. So uh, I still think they'll continue to keep him even after this year.